Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I know it's nearly the end of January, but I could have swore Christmas was yesterday. Santa brought me this big present. Let's open it up and see what we got in here. Oh, that's just what I always wanted. We got a new steering wheel, two shiny new brake bands, a bunch of little stuff, I'll show you that later. A new seat. Nice, nice, nice. Where are my cowtails? Where are my cowtails? What do we got in here? A brand new battery box. Hooks and a lid. That's gonna look nice. And in the same shipment, a new drawbar came. As you remember, mine had broken in two and been welded up. And in this little package, new coupling bolts for the clutch drive shaft going into the transmission. Remember I had that little play there. New nut for the steering wheel. New cross bearing for the steering shaft. The other one had loosened up. Gear shift knob. Gotta have one of those. New grommet for the bottom of the electrical box. And cowtails. I'm gonna leave them out. So what are we gonna do today? Well, today we're gonna button up this rear end. We're gonna put the PTO back into it. Put the torque tube back on it. Put the lid on the case. She'll be about ready to paint when we're done today. In preparation, I've taken apart and cleaned up all the parts of the PTO. I have all my new seals and bearings here. I've got all the clutch linkage parts that go in the torque tube, along with those new bolts I showed you. I've cleaned up the lid of the transmission, including the gear shift mechanism, all ready to go. And the first thing I wanna do is put this new seal on the PTO linkage, where the actuation lever comes through the case. And we'll tap, tap, tap it in. This is the shaft that goes in that hole. Slide that right through the new seal. And this business here is the detent spring and plunger, and then the linkage that rides on the shaft. We'll put those in next. Let's put the spring and ball in first. Put a little grease on that to hold it in. Stick that in there. And then we've got the there. Oops. How about I put it on the right way around? That'd be nice. There we go. This little bolt in here. I'm sure you can't see that, but I can. Sort of. And tighten it down. This is probably a good job for the impact wrench, but I guess I'll do it by hand this time. This plate here has got two pockets in it, and when you actuate the PTO, the detent moves into one pocket or the other. Now the reason I painted the back of this housing is because when it goes on to the transmission I won't be able to get in there to paint it when it's assembled, but I'm going to paint the rest of it while I'm painting the transmission. Next we can put two new seals in the part of the PTO that the shaft comes out of. And they stack right in here like this. And this is just due to past experience. The so one place I've found that tractors leak after I go through them, if I don't do this, is at the PTO shaft. So two seals provide an extra bit of insurance. And this is where on the PTO shaft that those seals ride, the bright rings. The rings are bright, but there's not very much wear at all there if you look in profile at them. So we're good to go. Put in the first seal. Then I have the second seal here, and this is something I think is very important. I'm going to pack that seal full of grease. Why do I think that's important? Because the first seal is lubricated by the oil that's inside the transmission. If the first seal's working all right and nothing's getting past it, the second seal needs some lubrication so that the rubber doesn't wear out prematurely. So that's why the grease is back there, to provide some lubrication for the outer seal. The next job is to put the bearing on the PTO shaft. And I have here a new bearing. And this new bearing slides onto the shaft and right down there. Tap, tap, tap that in place. And now with that bearing seated, the locking nuts go on. Nut number one. And then the locking washer. And nut number two. This side of the washer folds down onto the first nut 
and I'm going to fold up the other side of the washer here so that the two nuts are locked together by the washer. This is the inner shaft of the assembly and this is the outer shaft here. And this is the shaft that moves back and forth to engage these splines in the transmission when you shift the PTO. So this shaft goes over the first shaft like so. Now then we got to get this into the housing. It's a little bit of a tricky procedure because you got to get the linkage to line up with this groove as you're slipping it in. This block here has got to go into the groove. There you go. I'll just slide you out and back in. Now we've got the bearing started on this side. Just give it a little tap, tap, tap. It's kind of a slip fit, so no big deal. There we go. Linkage is all set in there. See, there's that groove and that block that rides in the groove that moves back and forth with the lever. I'm really trying to show you guys. There we go, in and out. Next comes the gasket and there's a little oil drain hole here. So this bearing's oiled from the transmission case from the back side and then there's a drain out this side so oil can actually move through the bearing. Grease this up a little bit so the seal rides on nicely. And the bolts. Next comes the gasket between the transmission and the PTO unit. I had to make this one myself. I forgot to order it. Then we can slide it all into the transmission. I lubed up the shaft here that goes into the pilot bushing that's inside the transmission. And you probably can barely see this, but it's got to go into the end of the transmission counter shaft like so. And then it's just a matter of getting it turned the right way. I'm bolting it on. Interestingly, International originally made a sleeve that went over this part right here, this machine, and it was a guard for the PTO and not in use. <laughs> I've never seen one, just in the parts books. I don't think very many of them have survived. So we're all set with the PTO. Engaged disengaged and there's where it engages into the counter shaft engaged sleeve slid on disengaged sleeve slid off and hopefully when I engage it it spins when I spin the transmission oh yeah there we go and that buttons up the inside of the transmission everything's in there except for the cross shaft that goes between the brakes but I'm not putting that in till after it's painted so the next step is to put the lid on. And I've got the lid all cleaned up hanging here. Clean the one side, clean the other side. Some things I want to note about this. First of all, International knew they were number one. They put it right underneath the battery, number one. Secondly, look at what battery acid does over time. It's actually eaten away the metal underneath these rails. Nothing to be concerned about, it's just kind of cool. Thirdly, how the shifting mechanism works. These are the shifter forks, there's three of them, and they correspond to the slots in the sliding gears right here. There's three of those. When I shift the transmission, one of the slots moves ahead and back. And if I go over, Another one does. It's a little bit hard with the lid hanging from a chain, but you get the idea. So this shifting lever here goes straight down through and it's got a double pin knuckle in here that lets it move both ways. It goes straight down through into a paddle that's down in there and that paddle slides into a slot in each of these three rails. So as you move the paddle back and forth, it goes to whatever rail you select and then when you push the lever, that rail moves up. And these little balls here have springs behind them on each rail, and they're the detent balls that control 
where the rail wants to land. It's super simple. Now, I decided not to take this apart because everything feels solid and fine. The detents are really strong. The shifter forks look fine. There's not a lot of wear in the paddle at the bottom of the shifter. You can tell if you get a lot of waggle, you know, when it's in gear that that paddle needs to be built back up with weld. This one's fine. No reason to take it apart. So I cleaned it up as is. To put this lid on, first I want to get it strung from the hoist level. So I'm going to set it on parts washer here. I use Permatex Right Stuff Gasket Maker on these because there's no important clearance to be maintained by a gasket shim. The only thing that's on top of this is a belt pulley and I'm not going to have a belt pulley anymore. And these make this makes a really good seal. And it's cheaper. Alright, I'm ready to put the cover on. There's a couple things to keep in mind. One, I went around and looked in these bolt holes here to make sure which of them were blind and which of them were open. The only blind ones are right behind the bolt pinion on both sides, and then the two that are in the front. The second thing is you gotta line up the gears correctly so that the forks sit down into them, and you want them midway between their two assigned gears. Midway. Midway. The other thing to keep in mind is there's three alignment dowels. There's one here by where the belt pulley would go, and then there's two in the back. And those are going to use, be used to align the lid as I drop it down in place. And i got to make sure that all the forks fall into the right place as well. Alright, I put a temporary bolt in there. we got this in neutral. We'll just align those forks in the gears. There. And I'll just make sure that the forks are shifting the gears all right. Yep. Looks good. I can go ahead and start dropping the bolts in. Let's see, the ones behind the bull pinions are pocketed. That one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there. For these ones that aren't pocketed into the transmission case, they have a through hole. I use some of this thread sealer, well, it's not really thread sealer, it's gasket sealer, but I found it really works well as thread sealer as well. It's just Permatex high tack. Some people will put silicone kind of in the bolt hole and around the bolt and I don't know. This way works good for me. I don't plan on storing this tractor outside anyway, but if it ever should get rained on, this will keep any rain from getting into the transmission. You know, I have a seeking suspicion that the Permatex gasket maker, the right stuff that I put down first, actually does seal up the bolts because it oozes all around everything as I squeeze the gasket down, but I don't know, can't hurt. Now I can put the belt pulley blank off plate on. I'm going to use Permatex as a gasket on this one as well. Remember the whole reason I decided to delete the pelt pulley and put this on is because on these diesels, unlike the regular M's, the starter is longer because it's a 12 volt heavier duty starter to crank the diesel and you couldn't take the starter off for repair without taking the belt pulley housing off, this whole piece here. So this plate will make it easier to remove the starter if I ever have a problem with the starter. And I never have need for a belt pulley anyway. Looks pretty done to me. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Every transmission needs a vent because atmospheric pressure changes, fluid expands and contracts as it heats and cools, so it needs a way for excess air to get out and not pressurize and blow out through the seals along with oil. And in this transmission, this is the vent right here around this bell. It covers the gear shift knuckle but it's open underneath so any air can escape around the edges of this bell and consequently if you leave this tractor outside 
This is the place that water is most likely to get into the transmission is down through here because this isn't a watertight seal. The next thing I want to do is put the torque tube back on and all the clutch linkage that goes in the torque tube. If you saw the video where I took it apart, you remember I had a problem with some play in this thing called the clutch ring, which is the joint between the transmission and the drive shaft coming out of the clutch. And it turns out that these bolts are very worn. And there's also some wear in the plates. The holes are egged out somewhat. So what I decided to do is I got a new set of bolts and I'm gonna reuse the existing plate. And it's gonna have a little bit of play in it still. I don't think that's a big deal. It's better than what it was. My main concern was shearing the bolts because they had started to wear. And you'll remember in the same video where I pulled it apart that this bolt was missing here and this coupling was free to move back and forth. That's no good, so it's just a fine thread bolt and then a washer and everything's tight now. To make this assembly go a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and put the coupling on before I put the torque tube on because I can work out in the open that way with this first set of bolts. You have to be careful which way these goes in because they're tapered and you want the tapered end to seat in the tapered part of the coupling. If you put them in in reverse, that's not going to work very well. And this is the way they go. Tapered end goes in this. We've got new rubber washers inside the holders here. And then it just bolts on like that. Well, I thought you were 5 8 You're 11 16 There you go. I think that'll work. Oh man, I'm tired today. I didn't sleep so well last night. I had this weird dream that I was a muffler. And I woke up exhausted. All right. Did you hear that Arnold Schwarzenegger will be doing a movie about classical music? How strange is that? Arnold Schwarzenegger, yep, it's called I'll Be Bach. I'll be back. Hasta la vista, baby. What stays in one corner but travels all the way around the world? You up? <laughs> A stamp. Get in there, alignment dowels. You can do it. It's a very tight fit, as it should be on the alignment dowels, which are on both sides, so it's just going to need a little persuasion. This fit is so tight, you want this gap to remain square and kind of pull it on with bolts on the top and bottom. So that's what I'm doing, working the bolts down side to side, top to bottom. These ones definitely need to be guten tight. Guten tight. Next, the clutch shaft goes on. Remember, it has this holder that goes on the top here. And then I can assemble the other half of this. Whoops, sorry about that. Oh, it goes in that way. Well, you get in there. Washer, you need to go first, and then washer. Come on, like that. I'll we'll spin it around and put the other one on. Wow. Well, that never hurts. Where'd that washer go? You did stay up in there. You were hiding on me. You go right. Yeah. Now you've got to slide in together. There. Even though these have rubber washers buffering the two, you tighten the bejesus out of them because the tapered pin is what holds them apart. It only seat in so far. The rubber washers just give it the ability to flex a little bit if needed. See, she can flex a little bit. The sleeve's not tight, so that's misleading, but it'll flex if needed. Now I can tighten up this carrier here, which does not carry the clutch shaft, it carries the throwout bearing. There's no rubbing by the clutch shaft on this carrier. Just carries the throw out. Next is the clutch shaft that goes in. Just slide it in part way and then we've got to install the forks. And remember for the forks we've got two washers that lock into 
these slots here on the shaft. So slide that on. Oh, get it that way. There we go. Flip it around. Then we gotta get it lined up for those washers. There we go. The washers in. And they need a tap, tap, tap to seat. The bolts to hold it all in place. I want to just check something before I tighten this down, and that is whether I can get this throw out barrier carrier. Yep, it'll go on there. The next step would normally be to install the throw out bearing. And this is the old one here. It's toast, of course. This is the new one that I got shipped to me. I got a problem here. It's way too big. It's the wrong bearing. So I guess that is going to be held off for another day, but I'm glad that it was the last part to put in rather than the first part to put in. It's unfortunate that I couldn't put that one last bearing in, but we got a lot done. It's really come along. I think this thing is a work of art all cleaned up. I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I got a long ways to go. I think next I'm going to rebuild the hydraulic pump. I'm not sure how far I'm going to get into that. It worked fine 25 years ago. I don't know what sitting's done to it. My tendency is to take things all the way apart, so I may go that route. And then I can put the belly pump back up into the casting, and we'll kind of have a complete unit to paint here. And then after I paint that, then I can start bringing and hanging up the other parts, cleaning them, painting them, adding them on. You know, I got quite a ways to go, but geez, look how much we've accomplished already. I save these cow tiles as my reward for the end of the work. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Mm. I like that they always send these with the orders. <laughs>